Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be telling you three embarrassing stories from my art school days. And, uh, spoiler, one of them might include my whole class having to evacuate. But the first story is a bit more of a simple one, so all you need to know before I start it is that when I used to go uh, to class every day, especially in first year, I had to carry around this portfolio bag. And the portfolio bag, it was a heavy duty, like rubber plastic kind of bag um, and with, you know, like the strap that goes over one shoulder. And it was heavy by itself, but by the time that I got all of my, like my steel ruler and my rubber cutting mat and then all the different sketch pads and things that I needed in there, it was extraordinarily heavy. And I hated how it always pulled me like to one side, like um, backpacks are so much easier because you, you know, you can share the weight between both your shoulders, but this thing just kind of cut right either at your neck or at your shoulder. And it was just, it was really a pain to carry around. Um, and it was sort of a daily occurrence every day when I had my short walk to school from the dorms. Um, it was always kind of a, kind of an unfortunate day when you had to go to a class that required your portfolio. So the other thing you need to know is that I went to school in Calgary, which is a city that sometimes gets very, very windy. And um, one day I was walking back from school with my portfolio and it was so windy that I felt like I was gonna be totally knocked down. And um, it was especially bad with a super heavy portfolio. But suddenly the wind changed and I felt that the portfolio got a lot lighter and it was kind of, a kind of interesting thing. Um, I realized that, that it was totally lifting off of my shoulders and all the way up into the air. And I was like, it was like this crazy wind that I had never experienced before that sort of like swept up from underneath the ground. It would be perfect for like a Marilyn Monroe kind of um, glamour shot actually, because it felt like the wind was coming straight up from the concrete. But um, yeah, it was very, very strange. Like all this weight had suddenly lifted off my shoulder and the portfolio was just sort of hanging in air for a perfect moment. And it didn't take me long to realize that something really bad was about to happen. So um, the wind died down right after this moment and I was immediately flattened. Like it just came down on me so hard and just like crushed me in the most cartoony fashion that you could possibly imagine. And all these kids um, were walking around who were from the, uh, the campus of the school that my art school shared. Um, and uh, it was all these like engineering students and stuff who had like one notebook or whatever that they took to class and uh, they all just like stopped and stared at me um, and I just like it was one of those things where you get hit so hard that you just have to like lie there for a moment and just be like wow that like really happened like it's like being hit with a piano or something it feels like something that can't happen in real life but anyway it was really really embarrassing I couldn't believe that um, such a cartoonish event happened to me but yeah, anyway, I uh, eventually I got back up, I brushed myself off, and I put all the papers that fell out of my portfolio back in, and I just continued on my way, um, but I was very sore the next, the next day. The next embarrassing story actually happened when I was in class. So I was in a painting class, this was in second year, and for those of you who don't know, when you're doing um, a watercolor with really like heavy duty watercolor paper, sometimes you have to like tape the paper to a board and get it really, really wet and let it sit there overnight. So basically the paper sort of stretches itself out. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. Um, it's almost like pre-washing fabric so that it doesn't shrink after you sew it into something. But anyway, once you do that, you have to use this heavy duty X-Acto to cut it out from the tape that you've taped it down with because that like never comes off. Um, and uh, I was doing this one day in class and you really, it was like super thick paper Paper. It was really really hard to cut and I had cut like a whole bunch of it by this point It was the end of the day and I was really tired and I was just sort of cutting away um, Not really paying very much attention and uh, yeah, it was really heavy-duty work and I was really tired and then my hand slipped and I became acutely aware that I had cut myself really badly. Um, I couldn't really tell how bad. It was one of those things where you injure yourself and it doesn't start bleeding right away. Like, it just looks weird, like you've slashed into plastic or something. Um, and luckily, my it was actually my thumb of my right hand. 
Luckily my thumbnail um, stopped the blade from uh, cutting all the way through my finger, but it was definitely a very deep cut and I couldn't even, my, the blade was so sharp that I didn't even feel it at first, but I had this very panicked moment because there was one thing about this class that was really unfortunate and that was that it had my very least favorite teacher in it. He always thought that I was like kind of an idiot and I always felt really embarrassed when I had to ask him questions and stuff because he'd make me feel really bad. So in this moment, I was determined not to ask him for help and not to tell him that I'd been hurt. So it pretty quickly started to bleed like a lot. And my first strategy was to run to the sink and just blast it with cold water and I thought it would stop bleeding. But the second I turned the water off, it started going like crazy again. So my next strategy was to grab out one of my band-aids from my backpack and just get it on. But at this point my hands were shaking so much and had so much blood on them that I couldn't open the little, like, the little bandage package and everything. And um, I tried like a whole bunch of times, but I just couldn't do it. So I had to wander up to one of my nicer classmates and just like look like a zombie while I asked her please to put a bandage on for me so that I could get to the sink and wash some of the blood off. And uh, yeah, luckily she was super nice about it. Um, and she was like, oh, should we tell the teacher? And I was like, no, please don't tell the teacher because yeah, he was horrible. But um, anyway, the moral of the story is uh, watch where you're cutting and you should probably tell the teacher if you get hurt. I was very lucky that it wasn't more serious. So my last story is sort of the grand finale because it is by far the most embarrassing and this is something that I haven't even told most of my friends who were in the class where this happened uh, because I didn't want anyone to know that this happened. Um, but okay, so basically uh, m this was the first time I had been in a real city. When I got accepted into ACAD, my mom got worried um, because Calgary is like a real legitimate city. It has like you know, a big population and I came from a small town. And um, another interesting thing is that Canada does not allow you to carry mace or any kind of like spray that's designed to um, to defend yourself against people. You can only have bear spray. So um, my mom being super worried about my safety uh, decided to get me a heavy flashlight, um, like a police flashlight and a DVD about how to fight people off with a flashlight. And she also got me this little personal alarm that if you click the buttons on both sides it will like beep or something um, because that was as close as we could get to mace and um, I put the little thing on my backpack and I kept the uh, flashlight in my room um, so that uh, she wouldn't worry so much and uh, yeah, but uh, as I got settled into life in Calgary, I didn't feel particularly unsafe or anything, and I kind of forgot that I even had those things around. Um, so cut forward to a couple, like maybe a semester and a half into the school year, I was in a class with that teacher I mentioned um, earlier who I really didn't get along with and who really didn't like me. And um, his classes, unlike most of the art classes I had been in, were always extremely, extremely serious and we weren't allowed to talk. Um, and they were just like super quiet. So it was like a very real, like very, very, very um, silent atmosphere. Like people always whispered when they'd ask the teacher questions and stuff. That was the kind of class it was. It was almost more like a math class than an art class. But uh, anyway, um, I'm working on my design homework and all of a sudden I hear the most earth shattering screech sound that I've ever heard. And it sounds like a fire alarm. And it's like, it's like the loudest thing I've ever heard. It was so painful um, and my ears are pretty sensitive so I really hated it. Um, so this teacher, he gets up and he um, tells us all to evacuate so we all, um, we're not supposed to grab our bags or anything, we all just walk out the door. And then he realizes that it's not coming from outside at all, it's only in our classroom. And at that moment I realize that I think that the little keychain or personal alarm that was on my bag is the thing that's going off. And I am so, so embarrassed. The whole class is evacuated, everyone's confused. He can't understand why this alarm that doesn't really, like isn't the fire alarm one and isn't running through the rest of the school is firing off only in our class. And so he just says, well, it's nearly lunchtime, you guys. So why don't you guys just take an early lunch? I'll get the security guy and figure out what happened here. And so um, knowing now that it's probably this little alarm doohickey that got like smashed up between 
my backpack and the desk. I walk in to go get my bag and I duck down and I um, secretly click the little safety button and it, lo and behold, it completely turns off and everyone's looking around confused and I just pretend that I'm confused too, but secretly I know that it's all my fault. And uh, yeah, that's a story that I have told almost no one um, to this day. So uh, don't tell my teacher and yeah. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys liked these embarrassing stories. Um, I kind of just wanted to share something from my art school days and uh, thought it might be funny to, to hear my, my trials and tribulations. So um, yeah, if you guys uh, want to hear more personal life stories, let me know. I hope you guys had fun and I will see you very soon. Bye. Thank you to my patrons, including Blep, Gaia, Scott Peterson, Weeb, Ellie Quiznack, Miss Misu, BB Dave, Kato Cat, Christy Stewart, Pinamel, Elizabeth Albin, Kel Pompon, Aaron Sawicki, Super Pixel, Rebel B, Taka, DeSweet12, Harry Kitty Cat, Isabella Spooky, Lovely, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Enzo Jobert, Yo Boy ST, JJ Jade, Laura Buter, Angela Taylor, Blah Blah Blah, and Addy Visual. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you would like to become a patron, there's a link on the end card and in the description box.